I think it's because I didn't really have a plan. You listen to the lecture and then you do the multiple choice questions and I didn't know I didn't know what I was doing. I would spend the whole day when my husband was at work because I hadn't started work yet. It was in the summertime right before it started working. I spend the whole day on it, but it was just a waste listening to those lectures and then bombing the multiple choice question <laughs> and then moving on to the next section anyway. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to episode 66 of the Superfast CPA Exam Experience podcast from Superfast CPA. I'm Nate, and in today's interview, you're going to hear me talk with Kaylani. And this is another one of those interviews where we get very technical and very specific on the different aspects of the study process and the strategies involved. So if you're trying to figure out your own study process, do not miss this interview because we get very specific on all the little parts of the study process. So before we get into the interview, I just want to mention two things. First, make sure you're subscribed on YouTube and on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss any new episodes. We have a lot more of these interviews coming up. And then also make sure to share it with someone that you know that's working on their CPA exams because these interviews are the best free resource available anywhere for people trying to figure out their own CPA exam study process. The second thing is if you have not taken the time yet to watch one of our free study training webinars, that is the best place for you to start to get a comprehensive overview of our study strategies and how you can use your current review course much more effectively, much more efficiently. So to sign up for one of those episodes, just go to our homepage at superfastcpa.com. It's the main thing at the top of the homepage. Pretty much every person that you have heard on these interviews started by watching one of those same free training webinars. So with that being said, let's get into this interview with Kaylani. Okay. So if you've been out of school about five years, where in there did you start the, the study process? Yeah. So I actually started right before I started the big four in 2016. So graduated in May of 2016, started studying June, 2016. I started with tax because I was most afraid of tax. I felt like if I could accomplish tax, I'd be golden. Jokes on me, I listened to all the lectures. <laughs> I tried to do the multiple choice and was failing miserably. And I just thought it was me because tax was hard <laughs> and I hated tax. Totally gave up. I just decided I'm not going to worry about it. I don't need it to cause me more stress. I figured I had five years before I, I needed it to promote. So I just waited out and see what happens. Didn't start studying again until August of 2020. Oh, okay. So not that long ago. Yeah. <laughs> did you get to keep access with your original review course or did you have to buy a new one? I had to buy a new one, which it sounds like now they're just forever, which is nice. That would have been nice yeah. at the time. My firm purchases Becker because they get a discount. So purchase it twice. That ended up completely getting rid of my little amount yeah. that they allow you to use on the CBA though. <laughs> okay. So in August of last year, did you, you just started the same way, just going through the lessons or did you try something different or how did it go the second time? Yeah. So luckily I actually found super fast CPA before I started studying. I had purchased the Becker course. I was watching a YouTube video and a commercial for super fast CPA came on and I was like, hey, that's interesting. And what interests me is the, I forget what you call it, but the little like informational one hour video that you can watch on super fast. Yeah. Just the free webinar. Yeah. You know. I was like, I'll do that. Cause that'll give me something. And it really piqued my interest. And I was talking to my husband and I'm like, I don't want to do this again the way I did it before. <laughs> it was such a waste of time. I'm just going to purchase this. And if it's a waste of money, I'll try something. <laughs> so I got yeah. lucky. I found it before I started studying. So I had a plan from the beginning this time. Okay. And uh, what would you say was there any just like aha moments you had from either like the free training or our strategy videos just about just a complete shift in studying differently? Yeah, I think the biggest one was not to use all the learning material just for the sake of using all the learning material. I was a really good student. I had to do every little thing when I was in college, no matter what, I'd get the extra credit even if I didn't need to. So having that approach with Becker especially was such a waste of time because you learn it perfectly for a few days and then when you move on, you forget it. And so that was huge, yeah. thinking of it in that way, learning it continuously, not by chunks. Yeah, I agree, obviously. And so how did you start using Becker? I have a good guess if you were following our strategies, but in your own way, because in your little note, yeah. it gave you a solid plan to start. 
and then you made small changes as you went, which is what most people do. But anyways, yeah. how did that kind of evolve for you? Yeah. So I started out um, following the super fast CPA exactly. I'd start out early in the morning. I'd go through the multiple choice questions first, and then I would do the 30 set of multiple choice over everything I'd studied so far. And then each day I would spend at least one hour reading the review notes. And then I evolved from there. So that was my starting point. And then listening to these podcasts was huge and coming up with ideas outside of just the solid plan. So you set the foundation with your plan and then I added on to it. You also mentioned taking notes. Someone on a podcast mentioned taking notes on the review notes. And so I started doing that and that was huge. Being able to take notes in the same sections that were in the review notes already in that same area so that when I'd read it each day, I was saying it again. That was huge. And then and I'd also supplement with the audio. So when I go to the gym or if I go on walks, I would listen to the audios every day as much as I possibly could. Okay. And so starting in August, you were already doing the work from home thing, I'm guessing. Yes, I was. That helped too. <laughs> yeah. So you would, you would study, do your main session before work. And then yeah. when would the hour of reading the notes happen? Just throughout the day in little chunks or? So it started that way. It became harder and harder to try to break it up in little chunks. So my goal was if I could read, because sometimes I didn't even take a lunch. It's big four. So sometimes I wouldn't even have the lunch time to take it. But if I did, I'd read small chunks. But my goal was by the end of the day, when I got off work, if I hadn't read up to an hour, I needed to do the rest of it. So if I didn't get a chance to read anything, I had to read for one hour at the end of the day. Okay. And I just stuck to that. Yeah. It, it's good to set the uh, baseline for how much you're going to use the study tools. So you'd use the review notes and the audios, or actually this, I was going to ask when you started this second time. How many weeks into it or how soon was it before it started to click and you were like, okay, this is working better. At least I'm feeling like I understand things or like, how did that go? So I had a lot of pressure at work to kind of fast pace this. So I didn't give myself enough time to study the first time around. To be honest, I failed the first time I took it. I also didn't implement, like I wasn't writing notes. For the first one that I was taking either, that was huge. I was studying for FAR. I took it, I studied over five weeks and you rec my recommended six to eight. I should not have only studied in five weeks. Things were clicking, but not the way I wanted them to. I was going way too fast. I got a 73 though, which was, even though it's two points away, I felt amazing <laughs> that I could actually get a 73 in five, five weeks of studying FAR felt huge. And so that gave me motivation to keep going. I started studying tax next. Tax was where I took eight weeks because I knew that was hard the first time around. That one was clicking so much quicker. It only takes a couple weeks. You're not going to get everything. But seeing the questions over and over and reading the notes, it only takes a few weeks before you go, okay, this is working. And then probably about halfway through is when I started realizing, I think I can pass this one. So you, so you get a 73 on FAR and then you switch to reg before you came back to do your retake? Yeah. So I took FAR October 1st and started studying for reg right away, October 2nd. I took it at the beginning of the cycle. So I didn't find out what I scored on FAR until middle of November. And my reg test was only a few days later. So by the time I found out I failed FAR, I was a few days from taking reg, took that, and then started studying for FAR again. And I don't recommend doing that. <laughs> yeah. I ended up taking my FAR retake and audit like four days apart. But by, I, 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 I just knew that this, it was like working so well I that I, I mean, yeah, it worked. So yeah. The second retake was night and day for FAR because I got an 89 the second Oh, wow. Time. So your two to three week suggestion was huge. Me and you had sent several emails back and forth. Did you email me? Yeah. 
how to study for a retake or was that you just watched because we have a video on that did you just find that video somewhere i believe the where i heard of it was in the i don't think it's called a blog the super fast like the forum yes in the forum i put a little post in there on what i got and I was encouraged and all that kind of stuff. And you suggested to watch that video. That's how I found it. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's anecdotal, but if someone emails me directly, like I got a 70 something like below a 75 mm -hmm. and I'm like, watch this video. Like almost always they email me back after a few weeks and they pass. Yeah. Cause it's just, I mean, if, like you said, if you got a 70, 273 on a different day, essentially with a few different questions, you could have passed it. So, I mean, really close. Yeah. It doesn't take that much. So going back, so what were some of your modifications that you made as you figured things out? What, just, what were some of your own breakthroughs? I would say they were somewhat minor taking notes in the review notes. I would say was probably a big one. Like it's a very small thing to start doing, but it's huge, but don't write down every single thing that you don't understand. You're not going to understand the majority of it the first time. So usually it was in the sets of 30 multiple choice questions when I would start taking the real notes in my yeah. review notes. I would say another one is there were some days where I was just struggling to just start a new section that was, I don't know, 50 to 100 questions long, and I just wasn't having it. And so sometimes I'd start with the 30 multiple choice questions instead of doing it at the end, just to boost my confidence a little bit and then do the main study session. That helped sometimes. It depended. With Becker, it's a little bit harder because Becker, you can't do at the end of every section multiple choice questions. It's like a whole module. So... That was a little yeah. bit more difficult. Somebody just mentioned in the, the pro forum, like two days ago that they did some update in Becker that you can do that now. Oh, nice. Yeah. Your first, or just that whole idea of all the little checkpoints that's built into these review courses, like mm -hmm. dashboards, you have talked about that with other people on the podcast, like how reliable of an indicator that is that you're like ready or whatever. So mm -hmm. this time around, you essentially ignored that I'm guessing. And yeah, would you just use the daily sets of 30 as your main indicator of like where you're at? Yeah, that's a really good question. I remember those percentages on there. Mine are always like 15% when I go and take the exam. And it's really like a percentage of how much you've done in the course. So I would use the sets of 30 multiple choice. I'm glad that you asked that because there was that was something else that I wanted to talk about. I actually use the mock exams. But I don't recommend sitting through the whole thing. I sat through the whole thing once. I did four hours of taking it and then probably eight hours of studying it because I forgot what I took. I don't know where I came up with the idea, but Monday I just decided I was going to take it in chunks. So I'd start the whole mock exam, take Tesla one, which is about 30 multiple choice questions, submit the whole thing and review that and then start it again, do the second set and then um, submit it and review that. And I do that with each of the Teslas. Usually those scores, as long as they were 15 points below 75, as long as I scored over 50 on those, I knew I was going to pass based off of that 73 that I got on FAR. I scored under 50, just slightly under 50. So I knew if I scored over 50, I was golden. I knew I was going to pass and that was pretty much consistent. But I have seen some people that score closer, to like 10 points above that score, sometimes right on. It just depends. But I feel like what bumped me up was probably that 48 hour window of mass studying that you talk about that I yeah. implemented. Okay. That was what I was going to ask. You mentioned the pro forum, which I, I know you were posting in there. So you had our pro videos as well. So you watched all yes. those. Yes, I did. I watched every single one of them. Okay. Yeah. Cause some of the stuff you're saying is I can, I can tell yeah. from that. And they do so the 48 hour mega cram session or the final 48 or whatever you want to call it. So you did that exact thing. Yeah, I followed it almost to the T. I will say that there's a lot of really good information in there. Some of it may seem overwhelming. The first time that I did it, I tried to, what I would do is I would do the study session, uh, the eight hour study session where you're doing the MCQs. Usually I'd fit a mock in there because the mock is essentially just 
sets of 30 and right. STEM. And they're brand new questions too, which is really nice to really know if you mm. know this material. That's how the Becker side works is that they're brand new questions that you've never seen. So they have some the questions that they reserve just for their full practice yes. exam? Oh, okay. Yeah. And I've definitely seen some questions in there that were then on the exam the next day when I would take the exam. Depending on the section, because some of the notes are more heftier than others, the reg ones are very large. I think I split those between two days. I read half of the review notes one day and the second half the next day, as opposed to trying to read the whole thing. And then I take short breaks. Once I finished with the eight hour um, setting the material and then doing the readings of the review after that, I would try to listen to the audio for the second half. So for example, if I read the first half of the review notes, I listened to the audio for the second half as I was like getting ready for bed, making dinner, something like that. And then the next day I do the opposite. So I was still hearing all of it. Yeah. And then your, your notes you'd been writing in the review notes, you went over those. Yeah. So I would read them as I'd go through since I'd write the review notes in since the material that I was trying to understand in the modules related to a specific section in the review notes, it was very organized in that way. I tried to keep my notes related to each section in the same section. So I would read my notes at the same time as I was reading the review notes. Yeah, that makes sense. Just anything you'd added over your study timeline is just right there as you. That's a really good way of doing it, actually, because by the time you get to that final two days it's all right there yeah yeah i yeah. really like flashcards but i i like that idea too that's a good point i forgot about the flashcards i did use flashcards too usually for me i would write the notes in the review notes and then usually about halfway through studying so if i'm spending six weeks usually around week three is when i started creating the cards because at that point in time I've read the review notes enough times and done the MCQs enough times that I either know it or I don't. And that's when I started doing the flashcards. So it was more because I realized the first exam that I took, I did way too many flashcards and was spending hours yeah. trying to read those flashcards. So that helped me so that they really were the most important things I didn't understand in my flashcards. Yeah. And again, <clears throat> it sounds so obvious when you point it out, but just taking things that you've missed questions on two or three times and writing those out in your own words, then mm -hmm. as long as you're diligent about doing that, as you get close to the exam, you have your weak areas, but written in your own words and explanations you've come up with, and it all comes back way easier than just trying to relearn it for yeah. the third time from the yeah. text or whatever. Yeah, that's too hard. What about, I mean, you kind of mentioned it. You were feeling pressure at work. But the question is, like, what kept you motivated on days where you didn't want to study at all? Yeah, for me, usually once I set my mind to something and have a plan, I can follow through. So having the daily plan and breaking it up into chunks that were manageable and knowing that led to a successful outcome was huge to keep me motivated. Another thing was I had accepted that this was my life until they were done. Yeah. That's huge. If you think, oh, I'm going to study and I'm also going to go hang out with my friends, you're not going to spend as much time studying. You're going to miss days. You just have to accept this is short term. It's funny, I was talking to my husband. It's been a year since I've taken the first exam that I failed and I've been done for I don't know, five or six months now, like it, it does get better. It's going to be terrible for a short period of time. And then it gets better. It's not your whole life. Just make it that way. Make it so that it's short term. Don't drag it out two years. It's not worth it. Yeah, definitely. And it's also an argument for like using the study tools, whether it's ours or yeah. the, the app that comes with your review course. The fact is... Mm -hmm. You have your phone, you carry it around all day, you look at it a hundred times and it's just every question you review or like every one minute segment of reading review notes or listening to audio is just adds a little bit, like increases the chances you pass your next yep. exam. Going back to your very first attempt five years ago. So back then, would you try and sit down for five or six hours at a time each day? And is that why it was so overwhelming? I think it's because I 
didn't really have a plan. I, I was following the Becker plan. You listen to the lecture and then you do the multiple choice questions. And I didn't know, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to learn it. Right. And it's tax. It, the tax one, you're not going to master that. You're going to read a lot of material in the book or the lectures that is not relevant on the exam. <laughs> in my opinion, that you're not going to see. So it's just a waste of time. I would spend the whole day when my husband was at work because I hadn't started work yet. It was in the summertime right before I started working. I spend the whole day on it, but it was just a waste listening to those lectures and then bombing the multiple choice <laughs> question and then moving on to the next section anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's terrible. I know. That's the thing is you're like, I'm doing the steps. I watch the video and then I mess around with the questions, mm -hmm. but there's like this there's a strategy element you have to learn. Like, how do I strategically break down questions or you get good at studying or specifically for the CPA exam? Yeah. And I think a lot of people just, their yes. only weapon against this is like time spent sitting in front of their review course. And that may or may not be effective. And if it's not, and you can spend years, months, years, and it just never really comes together. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. And those lectures are so dense. And then you get to the multiple choice questions and they may seem like they're coming out of left field. And you can't always go back into the book and teach it to yourself, at least in the tax one. It wasn't always there, black and white, teaching you how to do it. It was seeing those multiple. And at the end of the day, exactly like what you said in somewhere, I don't know, <laughs> I've watched so many videos. You're not trying to teach a class on this. You're trying to answer the multiple choice questions. So if you understand, how to answer that multiple choice question. Just keep doing that for all the multiple choice questions. You're going to feel much more confident at the end of the day. And you will not have learned what the book was telling you in those lectures, every little thing. Yeah, I, I did an interview earlier today and that person had their only exam they hadn't taken was reg. I <laughs> told them like my big tip on reg is, especially in the tax questions, confine yourself to the explanation per question because if you go back to the full lessons mm -hmm. you start thinking about exceptions does this other tax rule come in and they won't ever really present it like that even though in the lecture in the video mm -hmm. they will mention you know like and then but one thing you got to watch out for is but they won't make it that complicated or that tricky just confining yourself yeah. to the explanation on a per question basis because yeah like you said going back to the full topic it's very easy to confuse yourself and convince yourself you don't know anything about the topic. But again, you don't need to be able to explain it and all the nuances of all the different tax sections that could apply. You just need to be able to answer the questions you're going to see. Yeah. Another question I was going to ask is, so as you got going, did you feel like the study process just became easier and easier because you were getting like I said, like good at it. You're like good at studying. Yeah. And I think what started making me feel like I was getting good at it was definitely once I started passing exams. Once you pass two exams, you got it. Just keep doing it. What you were doing, you know how to study, you know how to pass this thing. It's just a matter of executing it, which can make you almost not as motivated. Like the fear of not passing is motivating in and of itself to keep going and studying hardcore, but just keep going at it. The last exam was the one that I got the lowest score on that passed because I wasn't taking it quite as seriously as the other three. So just keep pushing through, don't fail. <laughs> that is also funny and a testament that you were good, at, you just knew what you were doing. Whereas if you contrast that to like your first attempt, you were spending all day studying and still failed an yeah. exam. And then by the time you do your fourth one, you're almost like, uh, phoning it in, but you still pass. Yeah. So looking back at these emails, what test would you have been taking in? Cause you had emailed me saying you were really worried about timelines in this email from. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. That was before I took okay. power. I'm a very literal person. So I would like, if. Uh, again, like if I do this exact thing this way, I'm going to pass. So I was very worried that I was only taking five weeks to study instead of the full six to eight. So I was like, maybe if somebody tells me I'll be okay, like my nerves were shot. <laughs> but that's the one I got a 73 on that encouraged me that I felt so bad about the material and still scored decent, not passing, but decent. 
Yeah, that's funny. And then by the end, you were doing it the easy way, but you still end. Yeah. Yeah. Overall, what was the hardest part of the study process for you? I think getting going. That fear, these things are intense. I had already studied one time five years previously and had didn't even sit. I didn't even sit for that exam because I was just so overwhelmed. These are very difficult exams and just accepting that this is going to be really hard. You're going to you're going to be very stressed out. Yeah, they're just difficult. I think I forgot what the initial question was. <laughs> what the hardest part was. And then just with the overall stress level, once you knew your study process was working, I'm guessing you would say the overall stress these caused you went way down as long as you just executed your daily process. Oh, yeah. The first one that I was studying for, I was stressed almost every day. But then the next exam, I would probably only get stressed a couple times. And then right before the exam, I was stressed on all of them, like the day or two before the exam. But it definitely made the days less stressful each one I got to. It was mainly just those few days before the exam and on the exam day. What about your, because I'm doing these interviews, because mm -hmm. my philosophy, for me, it was just easier to never miss a day of studying. Because if I missed a day, the, the, the dread factor would come back. Yeah. But mm -hmm. you mentioned it earlier, just accepting that like, this is a, this is a daily thing. This comes first. I will not do anything else except this first. And as long as I do that, then I don't have to really think about it the rest of the day. But anyways, other people yeah. doing these interviews, there are people who take the full weekend off, but they've still mm -hmm. passed their exams. They would take Sundays off. How did you treat that? Yeah. So in audit, busy season starts, especially at the big four, busy season starts in January. So my goal was I wanted to pass FAR and REG before busy season started. I actually got lucky and started a new position in that time frame. So I didn't end up having a busy season in January, but I still, I did that. And I did it every day. I studied every Saturday, Sunday. I spent probably at least eight hours each day. So that's just what worked for me. And then, so I'd still wake up early. I'd wake up at five. So I was usually done studying by, I don't know, like two or three most days. And so I'd still have half the day where I could enjoy it and do what I wanted. And then once I passed those at the end of 2020, I started BEC and took that. I did take a break between the third and the fourth one. My sister had a baby. So I had something to look forward to as like a break. <laughs> it took about a month off. And then I came back to the last one and just knocked it out. Nice. So I liked your example in one of the videos that I watched where you said, if you're gonna, if a big event is coming, life event, something that you want to do, plan your exams accordingly. So it's in between. I wouldn't recommend taking off a whole weekend or even a whole week to go on a vacation in between these things. Just do it in between settings. Yeah, I think that was one of the other interviews where can't remember the name of the person, but. That's what they did. They took them over kind of the summer and they had some weddings mm -hmm. or whatever life events. Yeah. That they mm -hmm. knew they were going to go to either way. So they would take an exam the weekend before one of those things. And then just obviously didn't even have anything to study for those two days and then get back to it when they got yeah. back. It's also, yeah, it's also less stressful. If you just took one, it, even if you don't know if you passed yet, it's a weight taken off your shoulders. Mm -hmm. So. If you're trying to do things in between, you're just stressed about, oh, I should be studying. And it, how did you study on weekends? Was it, I think you just said that you would just still get up early and study through the afternoon and then you'd be yeah. the day. Yeah. So I would do the main study session with the multiple choice questions. I would get through a section. Sometimes I do multiple sections depending on how many I needed to get through. I usually would map out my plan at the beginning of studying based on how many multiple choice questions were in each section and how many sections I was going to do each day and which days. So usually the weekends I had more sections that I was going to get through. And then I do the 30 sets of multiple choice questions. And then I do five to seven sims. And then depending on how those went, if I felt like I wanted to study one more thing a little more, or if I felt like I was good for the day, I would just go read my review notes for an hour and then I was done for the day. Sometimes I'd go on hikes and still listen to the notes, but I didn't actually open a book or look at the computer anymore that day. It just was helpful to just disconnect the second half of the day. Yeah, definitely. And then you again, you just kind of mentioned it, but how did you use practice sims? I say not to endlessly fill out practice sims, but 
you also want to do yeah. enough of them that you get used to the format and everything. And then from there, you're way better off just learning the concepts from the MCQs in general. But anyways, how did you use practice mm -hmm. themes in your study process? Yeah, so I'd use them when I was studying for the first exam. I'd use them Saturdays and Sundays was usually when I would work on Sims. If you get the multiple choice questions down, you pretty much got the general idea. But like you said, especially since I hadn't taken any exams yet, I didn't know what those Sims were even going to look like. And sometimes those sins have information in them that you would have never learned through multiple yeah. choice questions. So for me, it was just another way of broadening my understanding of a topic. And since most of the sins is like fill in the blank and not just multiple choice, sometimes it's presented in a way that's harder than a multiple choice. So if you really know it in the sim, you've got it down. I probably did a bunch all over the place the first exam, but by the last exam, I only did them on topics that were hard. So I generate probably 10 and then just click through and find the harder ones and do the harder topics that I hadn't seen yet or I didn't know as well. That's, that's how you do it. Yeah. Generate a bunch. Of, yeah. Just look through the ones that are hard for you. Cause there's no point in doing the ones where you look at, you open it and it's easy. Yeah. And you, and you don't know. I was going to say, you don't have to know it 100% either. If you're looking at it, you're like, I know like 80% of this, 75% of this. That's all you need. Don't waste your time filling out the whole thing. Yeah. What I would always do is I would find those hard ones, instantly submit it. I don't stare at it for no reason for 20 minutes because I don't know it. Submit it. Mm -hmm. Get an idea of, okay, this is how this is solved. Start it over. See how far I could fill it out. And then as soon as I was stuck, resubmit it. And then just go a little bit further. Mm -hmm. And for the hardest ones, I don't know that for me, that was like the fastest way to learn how they work. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Most of the time I would spend no more than five or 10 minutes on one. And if I was chugging through it and I felt like, okay, I think I can answer these. I'd keep going. But if I was like, I haven't gotten anywhere in five minutes and I'd just submit it because at that point for me, it's easier to to learn if the answer isn't there right away. So trying to understand the question before I actually see the answer and then I'd submit if I didn't yeah, know what was going on. Right. And that's a good point too, because yes, I would do that step formulating some type of guess in my mind, almost like a hypothesis, because then you, you have mm -hmm. these things you're trying to answer in your head. And then when you see the answer, it's like mm -hmm. easier to remember if you were wondering yeah. what the answer was. Oh, your test day experience. Was there anything that surprised you on test day? Once you started passing, did they each go progressively more and more smooth on test day? Anything notable from test day? Yeah, I would say one of the biggest pieces of advice that I heard was managing your time. I would generally give myself no more than two hours for the multiple choice section, the first two test lists. So I knew if once I got to the end of Tesla one, if I had already taken an hour on the section, I needed to speed it up. Generally, most of the time I was done with the first two sections after about an hour and a half. So I had a good chunk of time to spend on this. The Sims are hit or miss. You could end up with Sims that are like so difficult and harsh to figure out. And other times they might be. I remember far I was getting to the end and I was like struggling to get those answers in there in the last couple Sims. And then on reg, I pushed myself. I was like, okay, I know I need to go by the time limit, not sit here and stare at a multiple choice question for five minutes. So by the time I got to the end, I had an extra like 20 minutes that I was like, oh, I could have spent that on yes. this other sim. <laughs> but just keep in mind, the whole exam is just as important as that one multiple choice question you're looking at. So just keep moving. Yeah, definitely. The aiming to be done with the MCQs at the halfway mark is like a bare minimum because the number one yeah. thing for sims on test day is to just to leave as much time as possible. That's yeah, yeah. it's really all it's about. And I, and then for the Sims, I wouldn't give myself more than 20 minutes, especially if I hit that two hour mark, I would think through how many minutes per Sim do I have now once I finish the multiple choice questions. So if I was spending like 15, 20 minutes, I would just have to be done, put in an answer and move on because the next one may be super easy, but if you don't have enough time to do it, you're not going to get those points. So once you get into the Sims on test day, would you just try to do them in order or would you look through? Would you look through and start with yeah. this one or do the easiest one? Yeah, I'd look through, but I didn't spend a lot of time looking through. It was like a quick 
some of them have really long explanations or like instructions. So those ones, I didn't read through the whole instructions and then decide. Usually I'd get a general idea, a quick read, probably a minute on each one and then just pick one. Usually I pick the easier ones because I could knock them out. Because then I'd know if I spent 10 minutes on the easy sim and 10 minutes on the medium sim, I had an extra 10 to 20 minutes to use on the harder one. So that's kind of how I did it so that I wasn't struggling through the hard one and then spending five minutes on the easy one that I could have got tons of points on. Uh, yeah. Because when I took them, you just got them all at once, but I would do the same thing yeah. hard. That makes the most sense, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It sucks they don't give us all of them at the same time anymore. It does. It changes the strategy quite a bit, like yeah. you said, because you don't know what's waiting for you in the second or... Is is there three on foreign and There's research? three sim teslets, right? Yeah, three. The first sim teslet is two sims and the second two or three sim. Yeah, you're forced to submit each one because you don't know what's waiting. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't know what they're going to throw out either. Correct. So you got your fourth score recently, fairly recently, right? Like a month ago or something? It was in May. It's so about five months ago. Oh, okay. So what was that? Yeah. Like? Getting your fourth passing score and realizing you were done. <laughs> that was huge. It just, it makes all that time spent, all those mornings waking up early, totally worth it. And now you have your whole life back. So yeah, it, it's an amazing feeling. Even just passing the first one, it's such a great feeling. Honestly, passing the first one for me felt almost better than the last one because the last one I was expecting it because I knew what I got on my mock. I was like, if I don't pass it, that would really suck. But I was expecting to pass it. But once you start passing, especially the hardest ones that you really put extra time in, it's, it's an amazing feeling. It's a great accomplishment. Yeah. So we kind of went through everything. Was there any of your best tips that, or even if we didn't cover it, just what would be your top two or three tips for people that are currently working on their exams? Yeah, I would say we have covered them, but taking notes is huge. Making sure that you're taking notes in some capacity. You're not going to understand exactly what you are reading. You're not going to retain every single thing that you read. It's not an active way of learning. So definitely taking notes. I would also say finding a way to review that works for you. So for me, it was the mock exams. Those were huge. Seeing brand new multiple choice questions. I didn't mention this, but I also use this super fast. CPA multiple choice questions as well. That's another good resource that has questions that's different than what you're going to see on your review. That's really going to challenge you. If you keep looking at the same multiple choice questions over and over, you're going to start memorizing those and you don't want to do that. I would say those are some of the biggest things and just know that it's not forever. It's going to end. There's only four of them. Once you start passing one or two, you, you've taken big chunks out of the process. What would yeah. you say... Just to you, what was the most helpful part of our, because you had our, you had the full thing, you had our study tools and the pro course. What was the main benefit you got from either the strategy side, like how to study or the study tools? What would you say the main benefit was? I would say probably the top couple things that really helped me was the review notes were huge having all that information in a form that's much more understandable and condensed so that I can review. Because some of these review notes, since I spent an hour on reading them each day, usually take me about three days to four days to get through them once. So in a week's time, I read through them twice at least. So that was huge. And then I'd say the other thing that probably helped me the most was just strategies in general. All those videos that talk through how to do the multiple choice questions, doing the 30 sets of multiple choice questions, reading the review notes, having somebody there telling you what to do and that it works is huge. Because in college, sometimes you have professors that are like, this is what you got to do to that. And CPA stuff, they don't. They're just like, here's this huge right. force to use. Just try it. <laughs> like, that's not helpful. Awesome. Yeah, like I said, we kind of went through everything. And we covered a lot of really good strategies. So I'm, yeah. I'm glad you found yeah. us and that it could yeah. help. And yeah, congrats on being done. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. So that was the interview. I hope you found that very helpful. And if you did, again, make sure that you're subscribed on YouTube and on your favorite podcast app and take the time 
to watch one of those free training webinars. It will literally save you months and months of time and frustration from trying to figure this stuff out on your own. So thank you for watching and listening and we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you.